Throughout history, man has always found ways to trade with other humans, whether through the barter system, calories, precious stones and metals, or any other exchange of value. We've certainly come a long way since then, and the most common form of money today is paper money, aka dollar bills. For something as integral to our daily lives as money is, have you ever wondered how it's made? What kind of raw materials are used in making it? Well, if you've been curious about all this, today's your lucky day. So sit back and relax as we take a deep dive into the process of making money. The earliest form of trade was the barter system, where people exchanged some commodity they had with another one they needed, like a bag of wheat for a bag of corn. But as society got more advanced, there was a need for a more complex form of value exchange. Because although it might have been easy to trade eggs for carrots when there were only three families in a village, it would be much more challenging to do that when there were 15 families. Gradually, better and more reliable systems of money were developed. But we didn't get the first paper currency till the 7th century Tang Dynasty of China, where they also referred to it as flying money. From then, paper money evolved into what we have today, crisp, cool dollar bills readily available for your spending. If you're watching this video, you'd know that money is arguably the most essential aspect of our daily lives and for the functioning of our society. Therefore, its creation and design are not easy tasks for just anybody. Its creation involves precision, highly trained and skilled craftspeople, and sophisticated cutting-edge technology. Today, notes in the United States are created by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, or BEP, and they've been tasked with this mission since 1862. Before that, private banknote companies were in charge of producing U.S. notes, after which they would send the notes to the BEP for sealing, trimming, and cutting. You can probably imagine the amount of trouble that would have been, not to mention the security and economic risk associated with it. So, the BEP does all its printing at its facilities in Washington, D.C. and Fort Worth, Texas. And as we mentioned earlier, the printing process is long and complicated, starting with the design. The banknote designers working with the BEP start their design process by throwing around ideas and rough sketches, then refining the look, layout, and artistic details of the currency. Once the design is ready, the next step is for the engravers to etch the design onto steel dies. The engravers combine traditional and modern techniques to engrave intricate lines and carvings onto a network of fine lines and grooves into steel dies. These steel dies are then transferred and processed to create printing plates. This step involves a high level of precision and attention to detail because any mistake made here can result in fake looking banknotes. So the printing plates are carefully examined and if any minor repairs are needed, they're now addressed. Next, the plates are polished and cleaned, then chrome plated for hardness. When this is all done, the plates are now ready for the printing press. The paper used in printing banknotes is made from 75% cotton and 25% linen, and it's made specifically for the BEP by a company called Crane Currency in Dalton, Massachusetts. It's illegal for any other person or company to possess that paper. One of the paper's unique features is that it comprises red and blue fibers distributed randomly to curb imitation. Other security measures used in limiting the production of counterfeit money include unique watermarks and special security threads that can only be seen under UV light. The banknotes are printed using different ink colors. For the backs of banknotes, green ink is used. But for faces, they use black ink, color shifting ink in the lower right hand corner for $10 denominations and higher, and metallic ink for the freedom icons on the $10, $20, and $50 bills. For the $100 denominations, the freedom icon uses color shifting ink. All inks used to print banknotes are specially formulated and blended by the BEP, and they undergo rigorous quality control tests to ensure only the best quality of ink is used. The actual printing process of U.S. notes is based on layering different printing processes on the paper or substrate until the final result is achieved. So, it's not just a one-way process where you chuck some paper into a printer and pick up the notes on the other side. Each and every print technology used in the printing process has a unique fingerprint on how the ink transfers from the plate, what type of ink is used, and how the ink lays on the substrate. The first layer is offset printing, where detailed background images using unique colors are added to the blank currency sheets. This process involves using state-of-the-art, high-speed sheet-fed presses that print the background colors. The machines are over 50 feet long, weighing more than 70 tons, and they can print at the breakneck speed of 10,000 sheets per hour. It takes about 500 impressions for the background colors to register, after which the press operators will pull each sheet for physical inspection to ensure the colors and alignment are consistent with the BEP's rigorous quality standards. The next layer is plate printing, steel plate printing, or intaglio. 
The BEPs and Taglio presses use specialized technology to ensure the banknotes have the highest quality and security. Each press weighs about 57 tons and can print with up to 20 tons of pressure. With a speed of 10,000 sheets per hour, the Intaglio presses can produce 32 or 52 notes per sheet. For this process, ink is applied to the engraved plates and excess ink is shaved off. The sheets are then placed on the plate and the two are pressed together under a lot of pressure, creating a finished image on the sheets. Intaglio is crucial because it's used to engrave portraits, vignettes, scroll work, numerals, and lettering in each denomination. Next, the sheets go through the Offline Currency Inspection System, or OCIS, a state-of-the-art computer system integrated with cameras and sophisticated software to inspect the sheets. This ensures only the highest quality sheets move to the numbering operation. Sheets that pass the inspection move to the next stage for numbering, while bad sheets are numbered and processed through a single note processing machine. Lastly, we have letterpress printing. Here, the press feeds two 16 subject currency sheets and prints two green serial numbers, the black Universal Federal Reserve Seal, the green Department of Treasury Seal, and the corresponding Federal Reserve Identification Numbers. The BEP uses two types of letterpress equipment. The first is the Currency Overprinting Processing Equipment and Packaging, also known as Cope Pack. 100 sheet stacks pass through the Cope Press, which has two sharp guillotine cutters that cut the sheets vertically and horizontally, leaving individual notes in piles of 100. Next, a rotating carousel collects 10 packages of the 100 note piles, resulting in a stack of 1,000 notes, which is called one bundle. These bundles are then shrink wrapped and get a barcode, which contains both the serial numbers and the Federal Reserve Bank information of the notes. The bundles go through another rotating carousel that shrink wraps four bundles into a currency brick, resulting in 4,000 notes. Next, four bricks are collected and shrink wrapped, resulting in a 16,000 note cash pack. So one brick of $100 bills will contain $400,000 and one set of bricks contains $64 million. This is the final stage before they're placed in a vault from where the Federal Reserve will pick them up. Here's a fun fact. At any moment within the Washington, D.C. BEP facility, there may be up to $300 million in various phases of production. Isn't that something? So, now you know the precision, attention to detail, and the craftsmanship that goes into creating the money you spend. Printing money is a long and complicated process, and it makes sense that only one organization has the task of printing notes. Also, since you know some of the security measures put in banknotes to prevent counterfeiting, maybe you too can identify counterfeit money if you see it. Well, that's it for today. Be sure to like and share this video for more like this. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you're the first one to know when a new video drops.